So we're going to talk about properties of logarithms and essentially there's three main properties in which we will be using for the remain of the chapter. The first property is the product rule of logarithms. The product rule says that if you have, if you have log base A of a product, then it's the sum of the logs. So a log of a product is the sum of the logs. Looking at the first example, rewrite as a sum of logarithms, log base four of nine times five. Now they're not asking you to do anything with them except use the product rule of logs to rewrite this log as a sum of logarithms. Okay, so if we have log base four of the product nine times five, 9 would be like the m in the formula, and 5 would be like the n of the formula. So this would become log same base, so log base 4 of 9 plus log base 4 of 5. And it's that easy. Um, my only note is to make sure when you put base 4, make sure it's written smaller. And then log and then value 9, log and the value 5 are all the same large font. Make sure the base is a subscript. All right. The next logarithm we're going to talk about is with base E. And E, recall, is Euler's constant. Euler is a famous mathematician that discovered this number, and it's an irrational number. I went ahead and put the number here. Where e is approximately 2.71828. And if you went to your calculator, and this is a graphing calculator, TI-84, but you could find it on any scientific calculator. Notice RE is right here above the division sign it's blue so I have to hit second because that's blue with the division sign and that'll give me the E Euler's constant and hit enter it knows that it's a number and that's where the number comes from we use logarithms with this base E and when we have a log with this Euler constant base E we change it to ln, which stands for natural logarithm. So log base e of x is the same thing as writing ln of x, or natural log x, equal to y. All right, so if I use the natural log, which again is just log base e, to use the same property, the product property, for natural log of 5m, I can easily do this. Now always remember when you see nat uh, natural log, that's always like a log base E. Okay, so we have natural log of 5m. First thing we should see that this is a product of two terms. And it's like 5 times m. So here 5 would be your m. Right, and the M, little m, would be like your capital N in the product property formula. So this will just become natural log of 5 plus natural log of little m. The second rule of logarithms is the quotient rule. And the quotient rule just says that if you have log base A of a quotient, it's the difference of the two logs. So looking at the first example, we want to rewrite log base 7 of 9 fifths as a difference of logarithms. So I don't want to do anything else with it except rewrite it as a difference. Notice that 9 is the numerator. 5 is the denominator, and the denominator always goes after the subtraction sign. Be very careful with that. 
Again, the denominator value always goes after the subtraction sign. So we have log base 7 of 9 fifths can be written as log base 7 of the numerator 9 minus log of the same base 7 of the denominator 5. And again, just to reemphasize, the denominator value always goes after the subtraction sign. So using the natural logarithm, once again, recall the natural log is just log base e, and we just write it a little shorter with ln. So if we have natural log of p over 3, again, note that p is our numerator value and 3 is our denominator value. And to rewrite this as a difference of logs, we would have natural log of p minus natural log of the denominator value 3. So just because it says an ln instead of the log log, they're both logs except natural log is log base e, and the properties will always remain the same. The last logarithmic rule is the power rule of logarithms. And this one is going to be the most important when we go to the next section when we start solving with these logs and exponential functions. If you have log base a of a value to some exponent, the power rule of logs says you can take that power or that exponent and bring it down in front and make it into a product between the log and the exponent. So having an exponent on the value says you can, instead of ha be letting it be an exponent, you can make it a product between the exponent and the log itself. So looking at the first example, we have log base 2 of 5 to the 1.6 power. Now notice this exponent is not what you're usually looking at because it's a decimal, it looks kind of weird to you, but again, it's just an exponent and it's a number and treat it no differently. So if I want to rewrite all the powers as factors, the only power I have is 1.6 and the power rule of logs says I can put this right in front of the logs. So if I have log a base 2 of 5 to the 1.6 power, I'm going to take 1.6 and throw it in front of the log and make it into 1.6 log base 2 of 5. So rewriting powers as factors just ask for you to take the powers on the value of the log and put it in front and make it into a product. Again, nothing else you have to do with it. They just want you to just get practice using these rules. The second example is natural log. Again, I'm going to remind you that natural log is just log base e of x to the square root of 2. Again, another power you're not used to seeing as an exponent, but we treat it the same. So this is natural log of x to the square root of 2, and I need to write all powers as factors and I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of 2 and put it right in front of the log and make it into a product. I'm going to have the square root of 2 times the natural log of x. So once again, rewriting all powers as factors just wants you to take the exponent on the value of the log and throw it in front of the log and make it into a product. Again, nothing else to do with it because we just want practice using the properties.